Well, it's Mr. Dale here, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about sentence structure, how to fix some mistakes that we're continuing to see. And uh, so part of that is we're going to be looking at comma splices, and we'll take another look at fragments, and the all-important run-on sentences where we still continue to make a lot of mistakes. Well, the objective of this video really is to develop sentences that have good structure. Uh, we want good structure in our writing. Uh, in our introductory paragraph, it's especially important to have our sentences well-defined and well-structured. So part of doing that means that we're going to be looking at clauses again. And we've looked at it already, but we're still seeing big problems uh, in that area. So we want to fix those right away. And uh, that will take us into a study of comma splices, and then we'll look at sentence fragment, and then finally another look at run-on sentences. So that's kind of the, the, the way we're going to look at this video and how it will um, move through it. Uh, like I said, we're going to be looking at clauses because really clauses are the building blocks of a sentence, if we understand clauses correctly and we can use them correctly, we're going to have good sentences. Okay, so let's look at a clause. A clause contains a subject and a verb. That's important to remember that a clause contains a subject and a verb. So if you don't have a subject or you don't have a verb, you don't have a clause. You might have a prepositional phrase or other type of phrase, but you don't have a clause. Okay. And there are two types of clauses. There are the independent clauses and the dependent clauses. And uh, if you can just remember right away that independent clauses uh, can stand alone, can stand alone, uh, then uh, it's really important because the dependent clause cannot. Well, we'll start right away with the independent clause. Um, an independent clause contains a subject and a verb. Remember, all clauses contain that. Uh, but here's the important thing you kind of got to remember. It contains a complete thought. Okay? An independent clause contains a complete thought. All right? So, let's look at our first example here. He watches the movie. Um... Does it have a subject? Yeah, it has a subject, he. Uh, does it have any verb? Yeah, it also has a verb, watches. Uh, does it have a complete thought? Well, yeah, it does have a complete thought. He watches the movie. That's a complete thought. All right, we'll look at our second example here. The boy cleans the table. Uh, subject? Yeah, it has a subject, the boy. And the verb here is cleans. The table, complete thought, absolutely. So we have an independent clause in both examples. Subject, verb, complete thought. Well, let's just take a few minutes also to talk about dependent clauses. All right, Dependent means they need something more. Uh, just like an old person might be dependent on uh, a family member, a dependent clause is dependent on, uh, in this case, an independent clause. It does contain a subject. It does contain a verb. The only difference and the big difference is that it does not contain a complete thought. All right. So let's look at our example again. Before he watches the movie. Well... We got this word here before, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later on in this video. But all dependent clauses begin with a marker word. And if you can learn to start identifying those marker words, you're going to see right away that you have a dependent clause. All right, Let's read that together. Before he watches the movie, well, it makes the reader think, I need something more. It just feels incomplete, and it is incomplete. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in the video uh, as we move through. But uh, essentially what you have here is a sentence fragment. We don't want uh, fragments. Um, so a dependent clause always begins one of these marker words. Uh, 
I have a very short list of them in this video. Um, you'll start to get the feel of how they work and where they, what they are as we go through this uh, video and as you start writing more. Okay? But a uh, dependent clause cannot stand alone. It always needs to be with an independent clause. Well, I talked about these marker words uh, before, after, because, although, unless, etc. I mean, there's many, many more. Um, these are some of the main ones. But you might even get the idea of the marker words just by looking at the short list of examples. Well, let's look at how dependent clauses can be used in a sentence. Um, before, there's our marker word, before I drive the car, okay, here we've begun our sentence with a dependent clause, all right? We've begun our sentence with a dependent clause. We're going to throw a comma in there. So if we join a dependent clause, okay, I'll just try here, dependent plus independent, okay, we're going to use a comma. If we begin our sentence with a dependent clause, we need a comma before our independent clause. And here is my independent clause here. I put on my seatbelt, okay. Um, let's look at the other examples. Here's our marker word, after. After it rains, the roads are slippery. Again, we've used our comma. Because she was sleeping, there's our comma, she didn't get to work on time. Although, there's another, we call them subordinating conjunctions. Um, that's a fancy word just to mean... Um, uh, um, one of those marker words that identifies a dependent clause. Although I am sad, I need to keep working, okay? And here is our last example. Unless she changes her study habits, comma, she will fail. So if you're joining a dependent clause with a independent clause, you need to have a comma at the beginning or after the dependent clause. Well, let's talk about joining independent clauses. Now we're joining two sentences that are complete sentences, complete ideas, and we're going to join them with what we call a fanboy's conjunction. And a fanboy's conjunction is an acronym. Let's just highlight it here. All right. Fanboy's is an acronym that helps us remember these conjunctions for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And those are called coordinating conjunctions. Now that's just a fancy word that means fanboy's conjunction. All right? So a fanboy's conjunction will always join independent clauses. All right? Well, let's look at how that works. We have two independent clauses. We have he walks to school. That's an independent clause. We also have he goes to his class. That's another independent clause. Okay, and let's just stop for a second and look at this example that I have first. He walks to school and goes to his class. Goes to his class is not a clause and it's not a sentence because it doesn't have the subject he. So here we've just actually joined two um, verbal phrases. They're verbal phrases because they have a verb, but they're not a clause. All right, so if you're joining verbal phrases, you can do that with a conjunction, but no comma. That's important because when we look at this example, we need a comma. All right, let's look at our, our, our next example here. Uh, he walks to school, there is our first independent clause, has a subject, has a verb, and it's a complete idea. And then we have our conjunction and. He goes to school, there is our second independent clause, it also has a subject, it also has a verb. Here it's not a verbal phrase. Uh, when we've joined two independent clauses, okay, when we've joined two independent clauses with a Fanboy's conjunction, uh, we really need to use this comma in there, okay? So comma, when you join two independent clauses with one of our 
fanboys conjunctions. Uh, well, let's talk just a little bit also about joining um, an independent clause with a dependent clause. Uh, let's look at the first example first. Uh, he walks to school after he eats breakfast. Well, if you remember anything about our dependent clauses, they do begin with a marker word, and our marker word is, in this case, after. Uh, so the moment you see after, you know you're dealing with a dependent clause. So we'll just kind of box off ours, our dependent clause here. And that leaves us with the deep independent clause, he walks to school. So we've begun our sentence with an independent clause and we're finishing it with a dependent clause. Uh, if we begin with an independent clause and finish with a dependent clause with one of these subordinating conjunctions, no comma is needed. However, if we come to the beginning and we begin our sentence with a dependent clause. Here's our dependent clause. Uh, after he walk, after he eats breakfast, there's our dependent clause. And our independent clause is at the end. Well, now we need to use our comma. Okay? So, again, if we begin with a dependent clause and end with an independent clause, we're going to put our comma in there. Uh, do we use fanboys conjunctions when we join an independent clause with a dependent clause? It's a good question. Never. Fanboys conjunctions are only for joining independent clause with another independent clause. All right. And when you join an independent clause with an independent clause, remember to use your comma and one of these fanboys conjunctions. Comma splice, uh, one of the most common grammar mistakes I see in writing. Uh, let's fix it and identify what it is. Um, a comma splice is a is a comma is when a comma is used between two independent clauses, and you don't have that fanboys conjunction in there. And let's look at an example of how that looks. I think she is a good student. I want to be like her. Well, we do have two independent clauses right there. Okay. I think she's a good student, and I want to be like her. The only problem is that we have a comma inserted in there. Okay. And we don't want that comma without a fanboy's conjunction. So, let's look at a better example. I think she is a good student comma, good, <laughs> and then uh, one of our fanboys conjunctions. Okay, so we've eliminated that comma splice problem with our fanboys conjunction. So there's really two ways to fix a comma splice. Um, the first way is to just eliminate the comma and create two sentences. Okay, with a, with a period and a capital letter. Probably the easiest way to do it, and maybe even be the best if you're looking for clarity. However, if you do want to use a comma, that's no problem. Uh, you just simply use the comma and then one of our fanboys conjunctions. Remember, our fanboys conjunctions are and, uh, but, okay, or. Those are the most po uh, popular ones, but there are um, about five of them. Okay, so those are two ways to fix a comma splice. Uh, sentence fragment. A sentence fragment is when we have a dependent clause and nothing else and again we have one of our marker words there when uh, when I got home well the reader is expecting more information here and it's not there so it's an incomplete thought when I got home um, it began to rain there is an independent clause so um, a sentence fragment is simply that you have a um, dependent clause without your independent clause. And it's essentially just an in incomplete thought. Run-on sentences, again, very, very problematic in our writing. 
Uh, we want to learn to identify a run-on sentence. And uh, so let's look at identifying one right now. And here's an example. I think that generally people today are living longer because they eat healthier foods and that helps them to have a good defenses because if you have good defenses, you won't get sick very often. So that is why I think people are living longer. I think as I read that, you can almost feel and hear that it's not a very good sentence and it is a run-on sentence. Well, how do we fix a run-on sentence? Yeah, well, it's got too many clauses. It's, it's lacking punctuation. Um, so let's look at how we can fix a run-on sentence and make it better. Uh, let me read the kind of corrected version here. I think that generally people today are living longer because they eat healthier foods. Let's put a period in. All right, start with a capital letter. That helps them to have good defenses. Be well, I didn't really like the word because. In a lot of our writing, we're using because inappropriately, right? Because is kind of answering a question. We're not really doing that. We're actually giving more information. So when you're writing, I want you to be careful with your word because uh, and maybe look for a fanboy's conjunction, okay? Um, help some of good defenses, and if you have good defenses, you won't get sick very often. That is why I think people are living longer. All right, so we've created kind of a better example of uh, sentences. We've eliminated our run-on sentence problem. And if we can kind of consistently do that in our writing, uh, you're going to see a huge change in your writing. So again, we've talked about comma splices, sentence fragment, and uh, run-on sentences. We looked at the clauses and uh, how that works. It's almost a mathematical uh, structure. So if you can kind of remember those simple um, things, you're going to be um, a much better writer. Okay? Thank you very much.